Esther, welcome. Great to have you in Joburg today's studio. Fantastic. Thank you so much. It's January. That time yes. of the month, everybody's waiting for their first paycheck. It's been a long wait for a lot of people. So this is a great time to actually talk about how to pull our socks up when it comes to being financially savvy. You're the right person to talk to about that. But before we get to that topic, mm. South Africa, as we know, like most emerging countries, has a very low savings culture. Why is that? And is that still the reality? It is a reality. And I think there's a lot of things that contribute to that. There's, first of all, the cost of groceries and cost of fuel and those type of things. But then there's also that little bit of a impulse purchase that give into the now, the live in the now, wanting mm -hmm. to buy the fancy car, driving the nice big German car, buying the nice handbag. A lot of that contributes all towards the savings issues. So in other words, you're saying that we have a consumption culture in South Africa more than a savings culture? Very much a consumer mindset, live in the now, not think about the future, not think about retirement, which is very important and people need to do. Your financial advisor, somebody comes to you and says, I want to save money, help me. Well, the first thing that you need to do is you need to look at the budget. Everything to do with financial wellness and financial awareness comes down to one thing, budgeting. Remember to split the budget between two sides, the non-negotiable and the negotiable side. Sure. Non-negotiable, things that have to be paid every month, bond, water, lights, insurance. The non-negotiables or the negotiables are your clothing, entertainment, those nice-to-haves. Mm -hmm. It sounds simple, but many of us uh, give up on that budget. <laughs> it does sound simple, but you know, as you mentioned earlier, this is such a nice time to do it. Mm -hmm. January. New resolutions, do your financial resolutions, take a cup of coffee, go and sit down and look at your own personal financial situation mm. for the year ahead. Look at your will, see if that's updated, draw your budget for the year. And yes, you might have to make a couple of cuts, but do it now, take the pay now, because I can tell you in a year's time, you're going to be in a much better p position. Okay. When we're talking about budget, I think there is a mindset that you have to do that on a monthly basis. But what would you say, is it, is it feasible, is it advisable to actually construct a budget or an analysis of your financial needs for 12 months in advance? And what, what should one consider? So the first thing that we would advise is a spending tracker. Now, a spending track is very simple to explain. For a month, starting one payday, for a month, track what you're spending your, mo your money on. 10 rand, 100 rand, 1,000 rand, cash, credit card, or debit card. Make a note of it. There's plenty of smartphone apps or Excel spreadsheet or old-fashioned in a book. You'd be surprised how much spending leak there is in that. So, oh, I'm going to have a cup of coffee on the way to work. Yep. That's 20 bucks. That's true. Multiply that by 30 bucks for a cappuccino. 30 bucks for a cappuccino. That's 150 rand a week. That, uh, yeah, 150 rand a week that you're spending. Mm. That's 600 rand a month that you're spending. Is not the good spending. Mm -hmm. So do a spending tracker. Check where there is leakage. Once you've done the spending tracker, then sit down and do your budget for a year. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we say is get a draft budget for a year. There's certain things that only happen once a year. Car licensing only happens once a year. That could be anything from 300 rand up to 1,000 rand. Mm -hmm. If you've got animals, animal inoculations can cost 600, 700, 800 rand a month, uh, a time at least. Um, there's other things, school registration fees, school um, uniforms, all of that only happens once a year. Mm -hmm. So it's a good idea to see where there's going to be expenditures during the year. So it might change from month to month, but a good idea to get a total view over the year. Mm -hmm. Are the banks seeing uh, consumers take up more unsecured loans? So they always over... Is, is it a good idea to actually take out a loan to consolidate debt? Because I think when we're talking about budget <coughs> and planning, debt comes up. Mm -hmm. no, so there will always be a certain, especially with the period that we've been through, the festive season that we've been through, always been a little bit of an uptake in your sort of unsecured lending. The question that you ask about whether it's a good idea to con take out a new loan to consolidate, a Every person is individual. Every person in every circumstance is individual. Mm -hmm. So if you're sitting with a loan that's got two months left over on the loan, you don't want to take a new loan out to consolidate your debt and pay that off over now five years. Yeah. So that's why it's very individual and every person and circumstance is different. If you've got a lot of debt that's maybe two, three, four years and you can consolidate it into one lower interest rate debt, it might be a good idea to do, but you need to do your calculations. Sure. What do you do as FNB to actually um, drive forward the awareness of saving more? So it's very important that when 
you start with the savings and trying to create this awareness is that there's an education component. Now something like this show is great to create that awareness about savings. We also do a lot of articles on savings so that there is that access to information for the man on the street. Secondly, getting into that savings culture is actually quite simple. An F&B savings pocket, for instance, can be linked to your F&B check account. You can transfer money to that and that can be as minimal as five rand. So that barrier to entry on savings has disappeared. Mm -hmm. On average, what percentage would you say is ideal to save from a salary? Again, a yardstick to go by yeah. is at least 15% of your gross salary needs to go into savings and investments, mm -hmm. which is a lot of money, but it's worthwhile to do. Mm -hmm. And it's possible? It is possible. If we just cut out all the overspending, all get the over, over the festive season already, for goodness sake. Get over the January, the festive season, and tighten your belts is ultimately Absolutely. what it comes down to.